Hello, I'm Dan Featherstone, and thank you for joining us for Tech Tips. Uh, these are five to ten minute little segments we do on a specific subject. Uh, just trying to get information out to you here that's very focused. Today, as you can probably guess, we are doing meters and what the little symbols mean, how we use them and how to read them, specifically in our industry. So with that being said, if you click on anywhere on the screen, we can get started. Okay, so like I promised, let's talk about these symbols and let's go through them top to bottom. Give you a brief description and a few pointers. The first symbol is AC voltage. It's a large V with an analog or sine wave behind it. And it's designed to measure alternating current, which pretty much all of our pumps that we are working on are going to be alternating current. It's going to give you a solid number. Now, a few things to warn you about is always follow state, local, and federal codes. Don't go where your licensing won't permit. We should only be measuring voltage at the back of the pump or at the pressure switch or the control, not beyond that. If you have questions or issues beyond that, don't be afraid to get an electrician involved. The other thing we want to talk about is we always wear PPE, your personal protective equipment, and always be on your toes. Don't cut corners. Safety is a priority. Now, one question I always get is what should the reading be? And if you're expecting 230 volt, remember it can be plus or minus 10%. So if I'm measuring 219, 220 on a 230 volt system, that's not critical. A better question is keep measuring it when the pump starts. If that 220 suddenly drops down to 190, 200 volt, we have a bigger issue. It could be wire sizing, might be a bad breaker. You might need to get an electrician involved. Now, the other thing I'll talk about real quick is often with auto ranging meter, you don't need to set it. But those that have options between, for example, 600 volt versus 200 volt, well, the first thing is obvious. If you're in a 230 volt system and you're expecting that number, put it to the 600 volt measurement. Always put it to the highest measurement. The only thing you really get by going to the lower measurement, say in a 115 volt system, is you get a decimal point. And in our industry, I'm not concerned about a decimal. The next one we'll talk about is DC voltage. That's the V with the solid line and a dashed line below it, or maybe just a dashed line. And this only has two states. You either have voltage or you don't. In our industry, transducers might use DC voltage. Where we typically might measure is going to be on a relay or some sort of signal device, maybe a run light or such. Very rarely do I use it, and typically, in my experience, it's been with a relay. Again, you'll get a solid number. Typically here, you don't get voltage drop because there's no real inrush to open and close a relay. Millivolts, little m with a large V, we don't use it much. Again, maybe possibly for measuring output to a transducer, but even that, I've never done it. There's different ways to test transducers and such. We never really have to test for the voltage. A large A, that's amps. And amps is the push that makes the motor turn. And so the bigger the motor, the more horsepower, the more amps. Now, here's the good news. If you don't like dealing with voltage, then measure amps. Because amps are measured by a clamp-on type amp meter, taking in consideration it's not just measuring the amps, but amps is also affected by voltage. So if you know your, your amps are not quite right, then you might need to pursue checking the voltage. Uh, amps can also indicate a bad motor, bad winding, I should say. And, and Overall, it's a solid number. So you'll see an inrush current where the amps will spike, sometimes one and a half to two times what the normal run is, and then they steady out. It'll give you a good picture of what's happening in the motor. Now, if you have a multimeter, I caution you, a multimeter that has one that's rated up to 10 amps is not good for, say, a half horsepower motor or smaller. It's not designed for AC, period. Uh, that type of meter that measures with the probes, you have to put the probes in the circuit, meaning you cut the wire. So we don't want to do that. It, it does us no good. And again, it's designed for DC current where there's no inrush. You put it into an AC current and it's going to destroy the meter most likely. So again, uh, if you have a proper amp meter, it's the clamp on type. Uh, milliamps, that's one we might measure, again, for a transducer, which runs 4 to 24 milliamps. So, again, though, there's other ways to test the transducer. I rarely use it. 
but that's where we might use it in our industry. Ohms. Ohms is uh, called out by the horseshoe symbol or the omega symbol, however you'd like to say. And that measures the resistance of the system. Uh, just like in our industry where we have uh, friction loss, electrical has resistance. And so the smaller the wire and the higher the amp load, the more resistance that's going to be encountered. Where we use it practically is, for example, winding tests. So have your meter set at R times 1, and you're going to get a rock-solid number, say, for example, 7.1. Then you would go to the uh, original owner's manual or the uh, three owner's manual and find out what the range should be for that motor. And if that's within spec, we know the motor's good. High or low is bad either way. Typically, when you have numbers that are high, that tells you that the electrical wire is damaged, uh, often due to a, a, a voltage surge or such. Lower numbers means that's usually a heat event, things are melting, and there's either easier pathways for the current to flow rather than through the designated pathways. So ohms, again, windings is a great test. The other way we use it is with a grounding test. And in there we want to see big numbers because we don't want the current to be able to escape. And so we want to see large numbers. How large? In the millions. So if I'm measuring each leg to ground, you know, for example, on a above ground motor, I'd like to see 5 million ohms or higher. The next symbol, that arrow pointing to like a T on its side, that's diode. We don't use it. Uh, but if you're wondering what it is, it's basically a check valve for electricity. The next symbol is audible continuity. And this often goes hand in hand with the ohms measurement. Audible continuity just tells you the wire is viable. Whereas ohms tells you what the number is or how viable the wire truly is. That's the difference. I pretty much ignore the audible continuity sound and turn it off if I can on the meter because it just annoys me. The last thing is capacitance, which kind of looks like a K with a line through it. This is used for our capacitors. Uh, be it start or run, will be giving you a range and a number they're looking for. So example, a start might be uh, 86 microfarads plus 20% uh, minus 0%. means it has to be higher or equal to 86 microfarads. The reason I like uh, a digital one, the analog type, if you remember, where you'd, you'd watch the needle swing and come back, that tells me my capacitor is viable. But now with meters so much more affordable, you can get one with a true capacitance reader, which will tell you the exact microfarads and that, that the capacitor is still viable. I like this test a whole lot better. And this is one you will use quite a bit in our industry. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. And I hope you found this useful. Have a great day.